Hello and welcome to this iMesh video. So I've had a lot of people ask me how did I make the motion in this garden scene uh, with the camera tracking. So I'm going to do a little video explanation here and the reason why I did it was because I think that this kind of motion is very interesting. We're seeing it a lot more through social media and especially in terms of virtual reality and augmented reality. That kind of feeling that you're, you're seeing what the viewer is seeing is I think going to become a lot more popular. I do know that some people have, some people have already said that it makes them feel sick. They don't like the motion, but it was a really cool experiment anyway, and I think that it turned out pretty cool. Um, like I said, this scene is available on iMesh as part of the whole uh, subscription package. So if you want it, then you can download it and peep inside and see how all these things work. Uh, but in this video, I'm just going to show you a very quick explanation of how I added the motion, some things that I needed to take care of when I imported the motion, and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this guy, I believe he's the guy that made it, and I would prefer if you guys just looked at his video just to see how, it, how he sets it up, because he, he explains it in a brilliant way, um, but what I'm gonna explain is once I import into Blender some things that I took care of. So check out his video on how to set it all up. Uh, it is available on iOS and Android. You put it on your phone, and then you basically literally just do a video recording basically, and then it kind of tracks the motion of the floor. He does set up a marker on the floor, and that for me, I. Found was very important. That allowed me to then set a focus for what I want to be looking at and then I imagine that's what I was looking at. So yeah, check out this video and now I'm going to jump straight back into Blender. Okay, so now in Blender, once you have installed the plugin from the actual mobile phone on the app, it will allow you to share the .zip file of your recording and send it to your computer. It's actually very simple and I didn't really have any problems with that. And once you have exported it, you have a .zip file, I just put it on my computer and now we're at this point. So I just I loaded up the .zip file and then I clicked import. And then you have this. So if I go into the camera, I'm actually just going to change this to 1920 to 1080. And if you have a video recording, you'll actually be able to see it in the background, but for some reason mine is missing. But I did find it kind of unnecessary because I wanted it in reference to my actual scene already. So I just hit that there and then we can just press play. And now you can kind of see that you're in this camera and things are going Fine. There are some jingling bits which just kind of shake the lid a bit too crazy and I'm going to show you what I did to kind of fix those. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a point of reference, like a couple of cubes. And that makes it a little bit easier to see the jingling around. But as I said, if you import this into your actual scene, you'll have other objects of reference. So go into the camera and we should be able to see everything a little bit easier. So you can kind of see there is some shaking going on. And what I found that was from is if I go onto the actual camera itself, so this piece, I go over to here and click on graph editor and there are some keyframes on focal length and the shifts, which I don't really want. So I'm just gonna select all the keyframes and press X and delete them. So that will already make things a little bit smoother but there are gonna be some points where there are gonna be some crazy weird motions. So what I'm gonna do is select this one, which is where all the keyframes live, and you'll see that there are already some really funky things going on here. And what we can see is that that is the rotation. So what it's going is, let me select it here. You can see the Y rotation was at zero, suddenly it was at 360, then it goes straight back down to zero. And for some reason it imports in that way and I'm not too sure why, but if I, if I select all of these, move this over here and then press G Y. Actually, let's go into here so we can actually see what's going on. Just select all of these keyframes and press G Y. So it's rotating all the way 360 degrees, but when it goes right down to back down to zero, it will look like the original motion. So let's just bring this down like this and there we go. So now, there's no obvious like uh, flipping upside down or anything. And this made it a little bit easier to manage because for example, if you wanted to smooth out the keys, it doesn't really work. Because if you do F3 smooth keys, it then tries to smooth all the other frames and things go a little bit funny. So I found it was easier just to clean these up, bring, bring these down to zero and make it a smooth motion. Right, that is fine. Um, the next thing I then did was look for any kind of weird motions. So sometimes there are some huge jumps. And if I go into the camera, press, press play, see if there's any 
moments where things just go a little bit funny. I guess at that point things make a funny there we go, there's a there's a jump. So if I try to find where that is, and that looks like it's actually this piece here. The Y and the Z maybe. So let's hide all the others. And the easiest thing I found to do was to literally just to delete those keyframes. Because what Blender will then do is try to make a smooth motion between them. And all of these are kind of smooth, so it wouldn't make too much difference if they just continued. So Okay, I found it. So what I've done is I've just deleted a bit more keyframes and it seems to have smoothed everything a little bit further out. So you don't have that strange jump and you do see my real motion and things still are a little bit shaky. So what I found was if I just select the, the location frames, select A to select everything. And what I'm going to do is, hey, you can see here, there's some strange motion. So I'm going to press F3 and smooth keys just a few times. And that really helps a lot. Sometimes I would just go quite a lot. And I found that when these frames were smoothed out, things were a lot smoother than if I was to smooth out the rotation ones as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set those as well and just smooth those out a little bit. So F3, smooth keys, just a tad. And now we should have some really nice, smooth, but still handheld feeling motion. Okay, right, so now that we have a smooth motion, we don't have some really crazy jingles or the keyframes are a lot more manageable and the camera itself doesn't have unnecessary keyframes in its shifts and everything like that. Okay, then what I found was that I wanted to move everything around, but how do you move things around without moving the keyframes? And I found it was a lot easier if I was to select this object, shift S, cursor to selected, shift A, and then add an empty. And then I'm gonna, I have a um, an add-on turned on called Copy Attributes, and that activates if you do Control C. So I'm going to select this one and then this one at frame zero, and do Control C, Copy Rotation. Then I'm going to select this object and then the empty, and then do Control P, and just copy that. So now wherever we move the empty, everything else moves as well. So then I just move this object and put it wherever I wanted it to be in the scene. So somewhere like this. Actually, let's go to the top view here. And this is kind of what I did. So I, I clicked on this object and then I just try to center it and use these as objects as point of references and just try to move everything around until I got it to the place where I want it to be. So now we are looking in a different direction and something like this. And so at some point in the in the video, you can see that I kind of jump away from the flamingo because <laughs> it's a terrifying flamingo. And what I did was actually, the motion that I recorded wasn't exaggerated enough. So what I actually did was I animated the empty itself. So I pressed, I pressed I on rotation to make a keyframe and then went over to like this here and went like this and pressed I again. So now it's doing its own motion, but I've added a, a little bit of a twist to it. It wasn't that exaggerated, but you kind of get the point that we can kind of add an, an extra control to move things around and yeah, I guess that's kind of it. That's kind of the, the motion. And in the end, I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out. Like I said, it might make you feel sick, but that I guess was kind of the intention. It was better. That's how it was meant to actually look. I think in some points, it's, the camera is actually a little bit too smooth, especially around the flamingo moment. Um, I feel like it's just a little bit too smooth. But anyway, I hope that you have learned something from this. Check out this application. It's incredibly powerful and uh, it's great fun. And like always, I just want to make everyone aware of iMesh. So we have that whole scene and everything over iMesh and we are basically a library package. We get 1,405 assets for $99 and that includes all these kind of scenes and all these models all inside that same package. So once you subscribe, you can just find anything that you like and then just download it and you start downloading those scenes. So we have seven full scenes at this point, which Actually, I think our most downloaded object ever is this scene. Uh, so um, this one was really popular as well. I also recommend you check out that. It's on our YouTube channel and we have a video um, promo for it, but that one was really good fun and I think it came out quite realistic. So if you're curious what you can get as a result through Blender Cycles, um, then I guess this is pretty close to some really cool thing. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, thank you for watching and have a good day and week. Until I see you next.